I thought my junior year in high school would never end, but it's finally over. I'm looking forward to being a senior, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. There's a summer break to enjoy first. This year is going to be a little different though. After years of saving up, mom and dad are taking a well-earned vacation touring Europe. I kind of wanted to go, but I get it. A couple of months alone time will do them some good. I was hoping to have the house to myself for the summer. Doesn't look like that's in the cards. My parents trust me, they just don't trust me that much. So, I'm being shipped up north to stay with Grandpa in Drake Falls, Pennsylvania. It's a cozy little town nestled between the mountains. Dad grew up there. He says the falls has an interesting history. Supposedly, a lot of strange things happened there when he was a kid. He told me some unbelievable stories. I'm pretty sure he made a lot of it up or exaggerated the truth. I hope I'm wrong, though. It would be cool if I could catch something crazy on video and go viral. More likely, I'll just spend the summer being bored in the mountains with my dad's dad. After a few hours in the car cruising through the flats and hills, we finally crossed into the mountains. The roads thinned out and turned into long, snaking stretches. Civilization fell away and we were soon surrounded by towering trees and pure wilderness. After a time, we came off of a mountain and rolled into Drake Falls. An isolated village right out of a small town horror story. We pulled up in front of a modest branch style toward the outskirts of town. Both the house and the surrounding property were well taken care of. Grandpa came out to greet us. It's probably been five years since I've seen him, but he hasn't aged a day. After we got the pleasantries out of the way, Mom and Dad gave him the rundown on my curfew, medications, etc. I kind of felt like the family pet as I stood there being spoken about as if I didn't know how to take care of myself. Grandpa saw the irritation on my face. He laughed and nodded, threw me a wink as he agreed with all the terms being laid down. They made me promise to behave and we hugged goodbye. We watched the car disappear into town, then turned to face each other. Forget all those rules, Grandpa told me. There's only one rule that applies here. There are no rules? I asked optimistically. Not quite, he replied. You have to let me show you around town. Give you the ins and outs of old Drake Falls. After, you're free to roam about as you please, but I would prefer that you try to behave. Thanks, Grandpa. I expressed gratefully. That would actually be awesome. Dad told me all kinds of stories about this place, but it all sounded like a load of sh... Der, it sounded far-fetched. <laughs> well, I can't speak to your dad's claims, but I can damn sure give you my recollections on the happenings here. Let's go inside and get you unpacked. Tomorrow, I'll introduce you to the falls. And we did just that. I unpacked my cases and bags in the room he made ready for me. Afterward, he made some popcorn and let me pick something to watch from the four available channels on the TV. I settled on some sitcom from the 80s, but it didn't really matter. We ended up talking about the past few years of our lives deep into the early morning. Grandpa ended up being someone I connected with easily. We had a lot in common, and a lot more that set us apart from each other. There was something about his manner that just put me at ease, like I could tell him anything and he understood me, genuinely cared to understand me. This was going to be an interesting summer. I could feel it. He shut it down around one and we said goodnight. I woke up to the sounds and smells of sizzling bacon and frying eggs. Rubbing the sleep from my eyes, I took in a whiff and smiled wide. The old man knew how to put together a good breakfast. After some morning banter, a great meal, and a quick shower, I was ready to take the tour that Grandpa insisted upon. He told me to wear my most comfortable shoes and tossed me a slicker, as rain was forecast for the evening. It isn't supposed to rain till later tonight, I pointed out. How long is this tour going to take? It's a small town, but there's a lot to see, Grandpa said. 
We might be out all day. Don't worry, I'm taking lunch and dinner with us. He held up a cooler and slapped it to emphasize the point. All right, Grandpa, I told him. You got me all day. Where are we going first? Just follow me, boy. Fair warning, though. It's gonna get weird. I smiled and recalled the old stories that Dad used to tell me growing up. I had a feeling I was about to hear much of the same, but with visual references this time. Grandpa's an intuitive fellow. His knowing grin told me he knew exactly what I was thinking. As we walked out the front door, he gripped my shoulder and squeezed. Thanks for humoring an old man. We left the property and walked down the road toward the town center. We would stop every now and then and Grandpa would regale me with a local legend. First, he showed me the childhood home of a serial killer who was born and raised in the falls and cracked completely after being placed in a children's home for troubled kids. Supposedly, the kid escaped from the home and went on a killing spree before mysteriously disappearing. Several killings throughout the state have been attributed to him, but he was never captured. According to Grandpa, the kid was a medium. He could speak to ghosts, and it eventually drove him over the edge. I should have known it couldn't just be a regular nutcase. Not here. Next, we stopped in the square. Grandpa tells me this is where Drake Falls holds almost all the festivals they celebrate throughout the year. As he tells it, a few years ago, a witch of some kind took advantage of one of those occasions to sell dark totems disguised as cute charms. Apparently, they would take these charms home and fall victim to some kind of supernatural attack the same evening. These killings would be made to look like accidents or an animal mauling. Naturally, this theory was never proven. No witch was ever found, but a shattered glass globe was found in all the crime scenes. Inside the town, Grandpa pointed out several homes where strange unsolved murders had taken place, locations of ghost sightings, a pawn shop where dangerous items were sold, all kinds of weirdness. As we neared the other end of town, we stopped in a small park for our lunch break. True to his word, Grandpa opened his cooler and produced some homemade sandwiches and a bag of chips. We were already into the afternoon, and the sun was starting to drop behind the western mountains. Don't worry, it only gets better after dark, Grandpa said with a wink, apparently noticing me staring at the approaching sunset. I forced a laugh, and we went back to it. He led me down Main Street to the outer edge of the falls and stopped in front of a dirt path that was mostly overgrown with brush. I could hear the faint sound of moving water echoing out of the wood. He pointed down the trail and proclaimed this as the home of Drake Falls' very own bridge troll. It is said that the troll demands a toll for passing over his bridge, but the toll isn't money. When I asked him what the toll was, he pointed to his hands and then to his chest. That left me confused, but he didn't expand on his answer. We simply moved on to the next location. We were getting into the woods now, climbing mounds of rocks and fallen trees. I would look back over my shoulder every now and then, and the town was getting smaller each time, until finally, it was gone altogether, and I saw only trees. What's all the way out here, Grandpa? I asked. A cave? No, he answered that. He pointed up the mountain to an old dilapidated tree stand. Hunters often place these stands to hunt buck and other big game. The larger ones were semi-permanent structures that would remain all year round. Grandpa told me that this was the site of a gruesome killing. It wasn't a person or even a bear who did the deed, he explained. It's said that wicked fairy spirits inhabiting the bodies of forest critters murdered that man. He was found covered in tiny claw marks, and a hole had been gnawed through his chest. They ate his heart and left the rest. I'm not going to lie, this one gave me chills. And now, every crunch and snap in the darkening forest caught my attention. The sun was almost gone now, and the warmth went with it. As if on cue, small droplets began to fall from the sky. Grandpa could tell I was feeling uneasy, and he smiled. We're almost done. 
Just a couple more stops and we'll have some dinner and head home. Deal? Honestly, I was ready to cut it short, but I could tell he was getting a kick out of sharing his tales. I decided to humor the old man once more. Deal. We walked away from the deteriorating tree stand. I followed Grandpa back down the mountainside, wishing his old legs could move a little faster the whole time. The trees thinned out as we reached the bottom, and we came upon an old road that looked as if it hadn't seen use in years. I followed the road with my eyes, and it led my vision to what looked like a large, ruined mansion. As I stared, Grandpa came to stand next to me and put his arm around my shoulder. Ah, you found Ravenwood, he said. He went on to tell me that this was the boy's home where the troubled kid began his murder spree. Furthermore, the institution began as an asylum for the criminally insane. It was called Ravenwood. It closed its doors in the late 1970s. A decade later, it was renovated and reopened as Crestwood Boys Home. The place looked creepy as hell, and I had no desire to get any closer. Thankfully, Grandpa was satisfied with his brief explanation, and we shuffled away back toward the town. On the approach, I saw what I somehow knew was our final stop an expansive cemetery lying just beyond the limits of Drake Falls. <laughs> Let me guess. Yup, he confirmed. The crown jewel of our tour. Follow me. Grandpa took the lead and weaved his way through the gravestones. Most of these were very old, maybe centuries, but a fair number looked newer too. How old is this town, I wondered. I stayed close as we made our way through the eerie yard and we finally stopped ahead of a large stone tomb. The rain was coming down hard now, and thunder echoed across the sky. Grandpa took my shoulder in his hands and moved me in front of the ancient structure. At last, we have come to the tomb of James Heron, he announced. He seemed more excited about this one than any of the rest. I got the sense he was about to reveal something truly awful. They say Heron was a warlock, and he ate the souls of children to extend his life beyond what was natural. But, as with most legends of Drake Falls, the tale has been distorted through the passing years. I had a feeling most of these stories were exaggerated, I replied, somewhat relieved. I said distorted, Grandpa clarified. I turned around to look at him and his eyes. His eyes were wreathed in a faint green glow. James Heron is a warlock, he told me, his voice lower and reverberating. But he does not eat the souls of children. Every half century, James is blessed by his patron to choose a body to claim as his own. He's messing with me. Grandpa's totally messing with me right now. Dad used to make goofy voices when he told me those scary stories too. I gotta ask him how he did that eye thing though. He continued and I played along. I have brought you here to claim, as I did your grandfather, and I will our grandson fifty years hence. I will continue your line, and in return, your line shall provide me life eternal. <laughs> sure, Grandpa, I said, slapping his shoulder. Sure. Ready for dinner now? I am. Well, that's the story my grandson would have told you had he survived the night. I devoured his essence and claimed his form, placing Grandpa's lifeless corpse in his bed at home. In the morning, I will discover that he passed in his sleep. He was old. No one will question it. It's unfortunate the boy will never complete his senior year. He was a bright young man. Thankfully, Grandpa left him his entire estate. He'll be just fine. Welcome to Drake Falls. Welcome to Drake Falls.